The history of the Irish people has been intertwined with the British since the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1170. The Normans overthrew the Gaelic landowning class and replaced them with the Anglo-Norman barons. This division would come to influence the Irish's involvement in British events. The Irish Catholics supported major failed causes in England, including the Royalists in the English Civil War and the Jacobites in the Glorious Revolution. These loyalties allowed for the Protestant minorities to ascend to power as the ruling elite. Throughout the 19th century, the Catholic majority had grown more distrustful of their Protestant overlords and began to argue for an independent Irish nation. The idea of Republican government and nationalism were nourished by the American Revolution, the French Revolution, and the many revolutions that rocked continental Europe throughout 1848. The Home Rule Movement, as Fitzpatrick notes, was an attempt to restore Ireland to a vision of the past in which the nation had been free to pursue its chosen course until besieged by alien forces. During the beginning stages of the Irish Emancipation Movement, many of the leaders appealed to the rural Catholic peasantry in Ireland. These Catholics joined together to advocate for the importance of maintaining the Catholic identity as the basis for defining an Irishman. To achieve this goal, many Catholics joined together in the Ancient Order of Hibernians and the United Irish League. Lawrence McCaffrey notes that few Catholics had the income or leisure for politics. Thus, most of the political change came about by the work of Protestants. McCaffrey further argues that Anglo-Irish Protestants feared the nationalism advocated by the Catholics and instead used the Gaelic culture as an alternative rather than a supplement to political nationalism. To do so, they initiated the Gaelic Revival. The Gaelic Revival tried to de-Anglicize Ireland by attempting to re-implement various aspects of Gaelic culture into modern lives. Groups such as the Society for the Preservation of the Irish Language and the Gaelic League were instrumental in this revival movement. The Gaelic League's main goal was to revitalize the Irish language. Most Irish language enthusiasts were quite frequently Protestants, and their movement was largely restricted to the intellectual elites. Comerford continues saying that despite these passionate attempts at revival, the Irish Irelandism that appeared to triumph in the Irish Free State was only a veneer. Irish Ireland was a preoccupation of the minority and was little more than a badge worn on the label of the majority. While many claim it a quintessential element of the Irish identity, the Irish language was not adopted by most Irish people. Most Irish wanted a future that only a mastery of the English language could give them. These literary revivalists attempted to create a new tradition built off their Gaelic forefathers. Among these revivalists, the most prominent was W.B. Yeats. Yeats himself succinctly summarized the goal of this group, stating, the work of my generation in Ireland is the creation of a literature to express the national character and feeling. Yeats's lyrical poetry resounds with the ideas of Gaelic pride. His poem, An Irish Man Foresees His Death, shows the internal desperation of an Irishman fighting for the British during World War I, despite his inner feelings of an Irish identity. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. Those that I fight I do not hate. Those that I guard I do not love. My country is Kiltartan Cross, my countrymen Kiltartan's poor. No likely end could bring them loss or leave them happier than before. These lines, read by Yeats himself, show the intrinsic impact of the speaker's Irish nationalism.